So guys, I'm just going to share a short here with you. Um, nice little one in, in the French. I've been scratching around trying to find a, a nice response to the French. And I think I may have done it now. So um, okay, we have E4, E6. This is the, the French defence. And then I'm playing the Horvitz attack, which is uh, B3. So your French player is going to go, what the hell is this? Right, they're, they're expecting to play this, they're expecting to play this, you know. Um, and I, I like, I mean, I don't often play Bishop Fianchetto openings, um, but they can be very deadly. So um, let's enjoy this. Now, I haven't analysed this game. I'll have a quick look at the anal uh, an analysis afterwards. Now, this is already, I think, inaccurate, okay? Because I've stolen the march. I'm in there first because I've got the white pieces, and I've prepared the Fianchetto with b3. Now, for black then to play g6, right, I can get my bishop straight in. Now, he can, so he, I mean, obviously he can't block with the bishop there because I simply take his bishop and then his rook, right? The rook is under attack, so he's either going to have to push f6 now or he puts his knight in there, okay, to block it. The knight is defended by the, by the queen, okay? So that's what he does. He puts a knight in, and then I think to myself, sod it, e5, right? So you generally don't want to put your knight out if there's a pawn that can come forward from the fourth rank to the fifth rank and kick you, okay? So now he has to move. Now I think, well, kick him again. This is a flogging the dead donkey, right? So now he's moved back again. And so, I mean, the story is I've got this incredible space already okay on the queen side of the board and i think well in for a penny and for a pound let's throw in d4 why not let's have the entire thing if you if you're gonna let me have it right with uh, just slightly sloppy opening play now he fianchettos his bishop but it's already biting on granite because it's looking at a pair of um pawns on dark square so out comes the knight and now he pushes d5 and this is a key one because um I need to ask myself, well, does it benefit me most or my opponent most sh if I should lock down the position? I mean, this is already fairly locked, but I have this opportunity to capture. And then I'm thinking, well, it's going to help his knight get out, isn't it? You know? well, yeah, his knight could come out this way, but I figured because I have the space advantage, I have all this room behind the pawn blockade. Um, where my bishop could come in, this bishop could come onto this diagonal. Really looking down this way, black. I figure it's okay to uh, to block up the centre because it, it's the blockage is in my opponent's half of the board. Okay, so now b6, and I just play b4 so that I can uh, recapture again towards the centre. So lots and lots of pawn moves, very unprincipled, but there we go. We'll see what the uh, analysis reckons. Uh, they castle. I play bishop e2. Just giving my queen more options to come out. And now they push forward and block off the third file. So now c, d, and d are all blocked off. Um, not really sure of the purpose of that move. I don't know if he was worried about c6. Was I going to push c6? Or maybe b5, c6 might be just too much for my opponent. So anyway, so he pushes c6 first. I castle, we trade off in the middle of the board. Okay, now uh, knight to d7. This is not the happiest place for a knight, quite honestly. Facing a dark squared pawn mass there. It really has got nowhere to go. Um, this bishop, however, does. And now I figure it's time, I remember saying to myself, look, this bishop's doing nothing, staring at the back of these pawn's heads. We want to get this bishop kind of up, get the queen behind it, and go after the Fianchettoed bishop. Standard plan. Don't know what a5 is about. Out comes the bishop. He kicks. Okay. Um, now this does create a target. So what I'm thinking about is maybe I could drop my bishop back, then create a barrage with um, a battery with my queen and bishop. Come after the pawn. Might force his king up to here. We'll see. So I come back. Now his knight comes in. And I'm not too concerned. Seeing as we do have this big mass in the middle, I'm thinking that his knight is, if anything, a more capable piece 
than my bishop, so I'm not too concerned. So queen d2, he trades off, and I, I decide to recapture here with the f-pawn. We'll see if that was the right decision. Opening up the f-file, and also potentially giving myself an option of e4, trade off. So I'm thinking maybe bishop here, push, take, take, and now my bishop's got better. But then also I noticed knight c3 looks at the same square. So I'm thinking, well, why not do both of these moves? Okay. Rook comes over. Again, that, that just feels like a slow move from black. But this is the problem. Um, when you get really cramped in space, it makes it very hard to find decent moves, right? So he's maybe just shuffling backwards and forwards, I don't know. Right, I've got all the space. So what you should do, if you're the player with um, less space, then trade, you know, trying to make trades will give you more kind of fluidity. Um, it'll benefit you a lot more than it'll benefit your opponent, okay? So, knight first to c3. He brings his knight round again. Uh, now, bishop to d3. So here, I'm, I'm, something I'm thinking about at the moment, or working on, is really trying to be patient. You know, if it's time to attack, attack. If it's not time to attack, build, right? Um, and I think this is a reasonable example of that. So again, his knight flies round to h7. It's got ideas. And now I decide to break for this. So if the pawn takes, I've got two options to recapture. And there's a very nice potential square here, although he does have now quite good eyes on f6. So he doesn't take the pawn, he brings his knight in. So I take, and now he trades knights, I recapture with the rook. If you've got ideas now, I've got a semi-open file, why not try and double up the big guns on that file? Maybe even Queenie as well. So he takes back here with the e pawn. So now my knight's not doing much. It's time to you know bring the knight around. He targets my rook. Um, I offer him the knight. He doesn't want the knight, so we double up. He lifts a rook. And now it's it's getting to time to you know pull the trigger. This pawn, I do believe, is um, a bit of a liability, having, you know, broken out of the blocks. Um, I like my dark squared, my light squared bishop here. I like my knight. I'd like to improve it. So knight now to f4. I've got two pieces looking at this pawn. Um, but again, I'm, I'm still kind of probing now. And now pawn to f5, and my opponent, so he thought for 26 seconds on that, okay. So he really did have a think on that. Now, obviously I've got this one op uh, opportunity to capture on Passant here, but notice that he's now undefended this pawn, right, with that move. So if I capture here, I'm attacking the rook, um, and I can always jump back, but I don't think I noticed that in the game because I now push h3, but what I did notice is that I was thinking h3 and he can't come back here, right? So if I push h3, he's gonna have to come back. Well, there, knight could take, you know, he might have to retreat. And then as soon as he did this, I, I, I saw, well, actually, now his bishop's got to go to h5. Uh, uh, so bishop goes back, I trade off, and now his king is peeled wide open, right? This pawn is undefended. That one's defended only by the rook. That one's defended only by the bishop. Um, and I feel like we've got a little victory. And then I also notice one, two, three pieces lined up against f5. So, queen comes across to e2. I'm thinking about taking out this pawn here. It might have been the right thing just to grab the pawn straight away, don't know. His queen comes out. Okay, but I still notice one, two, three attackers, only two defenders. So it's completely inconsequential. I capture the rook, threatening the queen and double threatening the h5 pawn. He trades, I recapture with my spare rook because I had one in my back pocket. Okay, and the queen now comes down with a des desperate check, but it's not going to be enough. The king just dodges out the way. 
This rook is offside. I don't know why it ever went to that square, really. Um, and these pawns just aren't very happy. So yeah, we've still got remnants of this big pawn blockade in the middle, but I'm completely ignoring that. I'm just working around that because his king's over here, right? And I'm the one with this kind of space. So um, his rook comes across and I figure I can go ahead and capture on h5 because I'm now double attacking this rook and defending my own rook twice. Okay, it's a very nice, elegant little move. There, and this was a very poor move. Okay, what's white's next move? Notice that if my queen moves, actually, I'm still covering h7. So queen to here, check. The only legal move would be bishop f8 and then queen takes, and that's uh, checkmate. So very nice finish. Let's have a quick look, shall we, at the old game review. Okay, so I slipped a, a bit in the middle there. Okay, but 83. For a five minute blitz game? Yeah, happy with that. Okay, bookity bookity book. So you see, immediately inaccurate, that's what I said. Best move. That's pretty much forced and best, good. Comes here, back again, and we have an edge now. It's even saying, it's saying throw up the H pawn. Wow. Okay. So all good so far, this is all fine. Um, now it doesn't like that. Hmm, yeah, because I could have allowed him to capture away from the center and then I go towards, right? So it's saying, yeah, just hunty develop. Yeah, I get it. Okay, B4, like that. Okay, and this is all fine play, you know, this is nice. Um, that was inaccurate, yeah, I, I, I was scratching my head a little bit at that one. Knight, bring out the knight again, it really wants me to get my pieces into play. That's fine, now we're one and a half, but we're gonna make a mistake. That's a mistake. Now it is improving the bishop, but he's saying, again, get your knight out, mate. There's probably some tactical reason why the opponent could have done something there, I don't know. And that's, yeah, a miss, so he should have played f6. Wow. Yeah, but this is, just, this is a head scratcher, that one. Um, bishop g5 is best, good, happy about that. Pinning the knight, that's fine. And, oh, should have just swapped off the knight. Yeah, check it out. I mean, later on, actually, I did make the case that, that his knight was better than my bishop. And now his knight comes out after my bishop, so... Um, that's not good. Why is that not good? So he should have played f6 here, again. Hmm. Okay, can't really see it. And that's that's a miss. Right, okay, queen takes it says was better. Okay, but I've got plans for this pawn. All good, that's good, but again h4. Wow, that's inaccurate. Should have put my rook on the open file. And this is okay, that's best, good. Rook captures is best, happy about that. And that's the only good move. And now I'm rerouting my knight, but it's saying double up your rooks now. Well, I'm, I'm about to, mate, so there you go. And now it says, no, that's not the best move. You should have moved your knight. Yeah, I figure. Oh, I know. Um, he should have taken that. Yeah, I mean, what is this? What is that move? You know, yes, he's extra defending f7, but like that's not the only target. Okay, knight in is great, and a blunder, yeah. So here it might disapprove. Yeah, it wanted me to take the free stuff, because it's very materialistic, the computer. Okay, bishop goes back, best, best, excellent. Yeah, I had this overwhelm already on the f5 pawn, I think. So I should probably have, have done that. Um, queen here, excellent, best, good. Oh, bishop takes, even better. Bishop takes. Hmm, okay. But this bishop did a, a good job at the end anyway. It's helping cover, see, because this pawn's moved forward, it's covering this h7 square. That's good, 
Um, best move, excellent. Yeah, happy with this. Very happy. And then that's it, and it's mating one, and it's going to be over. So thought you might enjoy that um, little example of you know building up to an attack, um, taking all that space at the start of the game was was a bit odd, but you know space in general having more space is a good thing, and I think it showed. I think it showed in my opponent struggling for constructive moves in the middle game. So. There you go, go figure. Anyway, if you've got any input on that, um, please put it in the comments. Other than that, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.